Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Mixed Media Friday. I'm just going to take a second and I'm going to get situated here. I'm just plugging in my phone. I think we're plugged in. No. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to load our comments. Sorry guys, I have a new tablet. And I'm still trying to figure everything out. <laughs> That's why I'm taking so long. Here we go. So I have our video. And hopefully our comments. Oh, am I interrupted or something? No, oh, I've done something here. There we go. Or maybe I have to turn it. I'm going to have to turn it that way. Hi, Gloria. Thanks for joining. Okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. So it's going to have to be Nope, and then I can't see my comments. Okay, guys, I have to figure this out. Yeah, this is a 10-inch screen, so it's a little awkward right now. Let me just kind of try to figure out where I'm going to put this and how we're going to... Yeah, I should be able to stand it over here. Okay. There we go, guys. I got that situated. Sorry I'm running late. Thanks for joining, Gloria. So I'll give everyone a second to come in. I um, posted late. Um, I decided to do some um, inspiration. So under the file section, and it should be in the announcements as well, I have my Mixed Media Friday watercolor painting tutorial by Fifi the Paper Crafter. So this is just to give us like a little bit of frame of reference for a few little things that we can draw and we can sketch in our journal. So, um, some people can, like, in terms of doing flowers and different things, you, you can absolutely, you know, by imagine, paint and draw by imagination, or, um, you know, like, as I call it, by the seat of your pants. But, um, for this tutorial, I figured, you know what, let's have some, let's have a frame of reference, because that might be easier for somebody just starting out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tag a few people so we can get started. There we go. And I'm just going to jump right into it. So sorry guys, I was running a little late. I'm having some technical difficulties getting my new tablet up and going. So here we go. So I recommend for you to print the page that we just, that I just posted. And then we're going to start off on the next page of our journal. So we're going to go over here to the next spot that we have, where we have two pages. So we should all be at the same, the same place. So what I want to do over here, I want to make myself a little grid on this side. So we're going to use both pages. I'm going to show you something super fun. And we're going to make ourselves like a little palette here. So just a simple, doesn't have to be perfect. Just like a little palette like this. Yeah, I'm probably here. 
doesn't have to be the whole entire page. Something that looks like this and just, yeah, like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be even and symmetrical. Just so that we have a little, um, a little grid to play with for our color mi mixing and our color matching. So it's just something fun that I like to do. A lot of people like to do this when they're painting. And it's a great way to um, refer to your colors and then you have a frame of reference to, um, to, re like to relate or to go back to. And mine looks a little wonky. So I have an eraser right here. And I can just come in and I can erase that. I hope everyone had a good week. Mine has been super busy with our kids' home. I was aiming to come live Wednesday. But I think for the summer, I'm just going to stick to our Fridays. Unless it's something super important. Until the kids are back to school. Okay, so now we have a little grid over here that we can use for our watercolors. And then over here, I'm going to come in with my pencil. So I printed this off just to give you guys kind of a frame of reference. So we're going to get right into it, and I want to make sure I'm completely focused so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. And we're just going to pick up our pencil, and we're just going to kind of play with it. So same kind of thing, guys. We're just going to kind of come in here, and we're going to draw the top of our mushroom like this and this kind of goes like this and it's going right off our page and I'm not worried about tonight's video having um, my tape down because we are not going to be painting the whole entire um, we're not going to be painting the whole entire um, page we're just going to be painting some simple things onto our page so here we've got our basic shape where our mushroom's going to go, and then we know that it kind of comes up like this, and it kind of comes up to about here, like that. So this is what I would call a preliminary drawing. So basically, it's not, um, it's not super important. We're just putting in our textures and our preliminary lines of where things are going to go. And then I want to come in over here. So this is about the same perspective, and then I'm going to draw in my next kind of mushroom, which is kind of like a shape kind of like this. And again, just a preliminary kind of sketch. And you can drag your lines around, and you can just kind of um, figure in how you want to have this go. And that's more of a, a fat sort of mushroom here. So we just kind of play with that like that. And again, I'd have some shading here, probably. And maybe even out a little further than this. So that's okay. We're just kind of getting that preliminary line of where things are. And then we have this beautiful leaf behind it. So then we're going to come up here. And we're going to sort of sketch like this. And up like that. And up like this. And up like that. That one's got like a little piece missing in here, and then it kind of comes down, and then the next one starts, kind of comes in here like that, and like this, and like this, in, out, and then the next one comes over here, and then it comes over like this, and like this. And like that and then up and then it sort of comes down over here like this and I'll just have it go off the page and then so you won't have to do the whole entire thing we just kind of do something that would look yeah like that to get the perspective right and then because I'm doing this a little bit bigger than the actual page and 
then we're going like up and like this and then like that so if you guys can see that that's kind of where our leaf is here like that and this is going to be bigger so again we just move our lines around like it's kind of like that and then over further yep like this like that and then like that so that's more of where our perspective is for this one and I would even say that comes over like that a little bit more and then for the next one so this is the one on the side that we have and then we're gonna come to the middle we're gonna kind of skip a spot and then this next one we'll do here so if we can at least get some of these mushrooms sketched tonight and then we'll get them all painted because I want to show you guys some simple simple um, techniques so it's the same thing for drawing guys we're not aiming to be perfect we can get it perfect once we're doing our um, our painting this is just to give us an outline of where our stuff's going to go so then the next one the perspective is kind of like this kind of here like that and again like this where it's kind of fat at the side and then it kind of goes up like this and then the next one is here so i wanted some basic things and then something maybe a little bit more complicated so then we have that and then we can erase this line um yep like that okay it's more like And then over here, there's a smaller, skinnier one that kind of comes up like this and up like this. And then we're going to draw this right in here like that. And then over here, we're going to draw the smaller one over here like that. And we know that there's foliage all in here and we can paint that as we go. I just want my preliminary lines of where everything's going to go. And this is three dimensional. So this actually comes up like this and the top part of it comes up like this and like that so that's how to create the dim the dimension between here and there like that so we can sort of see the underneath like that and then over here and that's okay you don't have to fit four you don't have to fit three um just kind of keep going guys and just kind of pick and choose for my inspiration the ones that you feel like you want to draw so i'm going to skip this one and we'll do this one because this is kind of neat i like this because it's like kind of like bigger and taller so again we have like our foliage that goes kind of here and then we have our first mushroom that comes up like this and this is more of like a round one kind of like that and then we're going like this where our lines are like that and I would even say that it comes out a little further and then the next one comes right up from here with a small mushroom right here like that and then behind it it's like coming right up off of here and I would say that it's um, we're gonna see that going up and then we're going to see this sort of come right into here and it has like yeah like this and then it tapers off kind of this way yeah like that and then the roundness of it is here and then it tapers kind of up like this and it yeah same thing our preliminary lines will be like this and then this is thicker towards the center here, like this. Uh, that would be bigger here. Sorry guys, again, we get our perspective. And it's okay if you have to like rub things out and you have to add them back in. It's just a matter of um, how you wanna add everything in and make it all blend. And then this one here is gonna come up like this from here. And then we're going to have um, I could even tilt it this way. So again, this is just to give you the perspective so you have like an idea of how you want to draw your mushrooms.
So we're going to sketch them all in. And then the next one we're going to do kind of uh, coming up like this. There we go. And then same thing, we have our lines that kind of come up like this. And that goes between here and here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want some preliminary lines of where we want to put our mushrooms. And the great thing too, guys, even when you have a picture, you can change things. And um, that's another thing that I like to do too. When I'm painting or making art, I will have a couple of photographs in front of me. And I will take bits and pieces of what's going on in my photographs. And I will actually um, paint details from, say, two or three different pictures into my into my work. So I just wanted to share that. And then here for these mushrooms here. Okay. So there we go. I have my preliminary lines of basically where I want my mushrooms to go. And then I'm going to pick up my um, my paintbrush. And I can come in with my watercolor paints. So I have a size 4 brush to start. So it's a little smaller. And I am using a round brush. And I've come into the darkest um, brown that I have, which I believe is raw umber. And then I'm just going to do some outlines here. So I can come up like this. And I can do all my outlines. And this here, I want that nice dark brown. Right here. There we go. And picking up lots of water. So again, um, on our little page over here, we're using our brown. And so that's going to be one of our um, primary colors for tonight. So again, I want to give myself like a little um, hint of that. So if you guys can see where it goes into the water. And I add a little brown. So I can see what I'm doing. So this again is for my darkest areas. And the same thing for this one. I'm going to do the underneath. So I like to do all my darks first, if that makes sense. So there we have some brown here. And I have lots and lots of um, water that I've picked up. And same thing for this one over here. I want to come up and I want to kind of give this a nice... There we go. So I get that nice watercolor effect here. And darker probably towards the top. There we go. And then come down. And then my sides here. Hi, Lori. Thanks for joining. I think it's just me and you tonight, love. I was a little late. I had to, um, charge up my, um, my tablet and turn it all back on and um i'm still getting used to how it works it's different than my phone <laughs> so it's like ah so now what i want to do with my little paint palette and i'll move it here so you guys can see what i'm doing too here we go i'm going to add white into my brown so again i've loaded up my paintbrush full of water and i'm picking up the white and I'm adding it to the brown so when I come over here into the next block you can now see that I have a lighter color than that I have more white uh, a little bit more white to it 
don't think I have it dramatic enough in change. There we go. That'll be better. Here we go. So this is our new brown from here. So you can lighten colors and you can darken them by adding, by adding white. And then I want to show you something too. If I want to add a little bit of a yellow undertone to it, I can come in and pick up some yellow and I can add yellow to my brown. And that's going to give me more of a, um, a burnt ember kind of look. And I'll show you that too. So here we go. Once we add a little yellow to it. So. That's my brown variations. And then I like to add red. So that's our next thing. I'm going to take that same brown. Over here. And I have it in a little clean space over here. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull red. Um, yeah, this one here. This one is, um, Viridian Red, I think it's called, or Cerulean Red. Yeah, there we go. And then I think that might be a little too dark. Yeah. So I can add a little bit of white. There we go. That's perfect. So now this new color is when I add red. So if you guys can see the difference in variations of browns that I'm getting. So when you take your brown, okay, and you can make yourself a note here too. So this is brown. This is plus white. And this is plus yellow. And this is plus red. There we go. So by adding to the tones to your colors, that gives you your color variations. So I just wanted to share that. So a lot of this will be done using that, that palette, I would think. It's not until we get into like the florals that we can do different, that we'll do like um, different um, variations in um, other colors, but I just wanted to share that. So this is why I like to make like a little, um, like a little um, palette on the side of my pages so that I can kind of keep track of how I like to do things. And then again, and I can also mix that reddish color in with my yellowish color. And then that would give me something else entirely here. If you guys can see that. So then this is brown plus red plus yellow. Here we go. And then I can come right into here. See, I've smudged that already with my hand. And that's okay. Because we were wet. And I can come in and pull that. That lighter brown. And now I want to switch to a bigger brush. So if you feel like what you're doing um, is kind of a large area and you're using too small of a brush, just switch it up to your next size brush. So this is more comfortable for me. Yeah, there we go. So I can get the larger brush strokes kind of in. And the great thing too, like again, guys, you can just pick up where you've left off and you can just kind of pull things in like that and push things out. So even after it's dry, yeah, you can pull things in and push them out. And then if something happens where you don't want it, I'll show you right here, guys. I can lift that right off. Hi, Sylvia. Thanks for joining, love. So this is just done with a water technique. You fill up your brush. I'm down with your water. And I can literally come in and pick most of this up. Well, maybe not because I'm on mixed media cardstock. This technique is easier to do on, um, on watercolor paper. Yeah, and I'm using heavy stock right now. That's okay. I can just paint over it. And then I want to come in and I want to add a little bit more red to that. Actually, you know what? Let's pick up the yellow tone first for 
for our lights across here. Here we go. Here are our lights. Kind of our, yeah, our undertone there. And then what I want to do is add white. So for this color of our mushrooms here, there we go, guys, so you guys can see for this color here, I want to pick up white. Lots of white. And then I want to add a touch of brown. So not a lot of brown, just a touch. Here we go. So I have this really nice light color. And I've got almost like a gray. There we go. A really nice tan. And then I can come in and do the base of all my mushrooms. Here we go. And again, the more water you add, the lighter it is. So see guys, you can just blend it all out. So you can do that however you like. As light or as um, dark as you like. So again, I have taken white and I have taken brown. Just making up a little bit more. There we go. And that's given me this. So that's white and brown. And it's okay if you get different variations of the colors. Um, for this part here, I've gotten a little bit darker, so I'm just going to embrace that and do kind of like the outline so that it appears to be um, like darker um, on one side and lighter in the middle. So we can embrace that. Here we go. And here. And same with here. And here along the bottom. And here along the bottom. Right in here, and going up. So do whatever you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable um, watercoloring in your um, images without drawing them, go ahead and do that. But I just wanted to, like, this is a nice beginner place to start for anyone new who maybe hasn't watercolored um, painted before or doesn't have too much experience. This is a great way to start just by drawing yourself kind of like a little um, guideline. So it doesn't have to be permanent once you've um, started painting. You can add your other stuff in and do a completely different thing. It's just a great starting point. And I know for myself, when I first started watercolor painting, it made me more comfortable. So I just wanted to share this little tip. To have like a, it's okay to have a frame of reference. And then same thing, guys. This will be a little darker coming up here. Right into the top. And always do your light, your, your lightest, and then like from light to dark. So your lightest colors first, and then your darker colors last, and where you do your outlines, and where you want things to pop. So I just wanted to share that. So this is the same thing, guys. I've taken the, the brown and the white, and I've mixed them together. And I've just got like a little bit of a darker color. So it's kind of like our, our color up here, if you guys can see that of what we have there. There we go. 
There we go. And then we can kind of come through here too. Because that gets a little darker on the sides. And then we're a little darker in the middle. And then we get super light in there. And then I'm going to add more white to that. So that's kind of what I'm doing, guys. I've got the darker first for, for my mushrooms. And I'm just going to keep adding my, my, my lighter layers because they're towards the middle. And I don't want to... I don't want to smudge it with my hand. So again, we've got a lighter color here, and I'm just going to kind of blend that as we go in. Here we go. And just blend it. Here we go. And I've got something a little lighter so we can come right in here. It shows me that two people are watching and um, I don't see any comments. So I'm sure there's something wrong on my end. So I'm going to have to figure that out, guys. Oh, let me see. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's probably my new tablet. And then if I tip it this way, it doesn't show me any comments at all. Nope. Oh, here we go. Swipe to see comments and reactions. Swipe. Nope. Get out of there and go back in maybe. Nope. Okay, now I've lost my feed. One sec, guys. I'm still trying to figure this all out. Here we go. There we go. Now I got the comments. Hi, Stina. Thanks for joining. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Tracy. Sorry, guys. I'm using the Windsor & Newton... Um, 12 color palette. I ordered it from Amazon. It wasn't bad, Lori. It was $39 in Canada. So it's about the same price as like a Prima palette or um, um, Jane Davenport or any of those ones. So I just wanted to show that. But it's probably easier for us to It's probably easier for us in Canada to get, um, to get this one. Oh, I know, Stina, I've barely been in here. Um, it's just been so crazy having my kids home from school. And I'm really excited, guys. I'm um, halfway through the next kit. <laughs> so I'm going to have that done probably in the next two weeks. I'm aiming to have it done. So I'm really excited. But yeah, I've barely been in my craft room. 
and it's so hot here. It's been um, pretty much been 30 degrees every day. We have um, degrees Celsius in Canada. So it's been very hot. Here we go. And I think I'm, I like that with the brown. And I can just kind of, yeah, and then it doesn't have to be even. And I can kind of add all my little, there we go. So now it's starting to take a little bit better shape. And then we've got lots of speckles. Here we go. So now I've got the dots happening. And then if I don't want them all that same color either, I can add that little bit of white. Here we go. So then we have a little bit of pop of the next color. I'm just trying not to smudge things. <laughs> there we go. And some dots towards the top. Yeah, like that. It's kind of lighter. Yeah, like that. And I want some more of that like burnt sienna kind of color. Here we go. So this is a great way to add little things to the bottoms of your journals. So I'm, we're doing this tonight in our... Um, in our art book but you could do this on your journal pages and you could add like little mushrooms and little um little things to your um your regular journal pages you can make your own stationery there's so many things that you can do with this kind of technique and it's basically just just doodling so you start out, you know, doing like a little drawing, like a little preliminary drawing, and then you can add in um, your watercolors. I also love to paint with my distress inks and my reinkers. So that's another thing I really like to do. And I just want to get rid of anywhere where I have pencil lines. Here we go. And I don't really feel like I need to um, use like a black outline for this. I would just use my brown. Because again, that's probably the darkest area I've done here. And then, so when you want a thick line, you're going to hold your brush up to here. And you're going to go and you're going to use towards um, this point of your brush. So you're going to use here when you want a thick line. And when you want a super thin line, you go a little closer and then you just... For your thin lines and that's gonna eat you're just gonna um, use the tip so I just wanted to share that so the closer to the to the tip that you get you're gonna get these nice little thin lines and then the closer to like the further back you go you're gonna get these nice thick lines so I just wanted to share that There we go, and I just want to smooth that out a little. And when this dries, I can come back and I can add highlights. There we go. Oh, it's all good, sweetie. Yeah, it's probably going to take me two or three weeks for the next one. I'm exactly halfway through. But I'm loving it, and I hope you guys love it, too. It's turning out really good. And I'm super happy with it. And there we go. And I can come up here. And then I want to add a little bit darker to here. There we go. For that mushroom here. 
And again, if you don't like something, you can just kind of extend it and just kind of keep adding. And then I have my little lines here. There we go. And then I can come in with some white. There we go. And I can add my little dots here too. And then this one doesn't really have any, but I want to add some more red. So I just wanted to show you this too. So again, I'm just going to go into my um, cad cadmium. That's the color I was looking for. My cadmium red. And I'm going to add a little bit of that to my brown. And then I'm going to get this beautiful like burnt sienna color. So if we don't have... So there we go. I've got more of a red. So let's say there's another variation of adding your red to it. So the more you add, the, the more red it becomes. It's almost like an orange color. So now I want to do like, there we go. Nice little highlight through here. And maybe even some like this through here. Like that. Like this and then this one here and add some accent here there we go but I want white on that too so I'm just gonna come right in and pick up white there we go because it's wet I can add my white right to it and just kind of make it pop and same with over here I can pick up that red with that white and have dark on one side. There we go, and kind of light on the other. There we go. And our darks are kind of here. Like that. We have some light here. Up like this. And then we have white. Sorry guys, I go quiet when I'm just... Yeah, there we go. And I can add some more white. So this is kind of dark. So again, I like the darks, the lights, anywhere that I just kind of want to kind of get a feel of um, my color combination. And then when things dry, I can go back and add fine details later. So you're probably looking at this and going, oh, that's kind of a hot mess compared to your picture. Yeah, because I'm getting all my darks and my lights in. And then once it's dry, I can go in and add um, dimension to it. So I don't do my 3D, like, I don't do the dimension to it until it's dry. Because you can't. It's just going to blend to the background with everything else. So it has to be completely dry. So I just wanted to share that. That's the method behind my madness. <laughs> there is one, I swear. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So there, I'm happy with that color there. And that's a softer looking mushroom. And again, here's my, um, I like that red color. So I'm just going to go right back in here. And pick up more of this and then I can do like the fine details here of my leaf
And again, guys, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is our art journal. And it's kind of behind here. There we go. Now I want to mix a little green in with my brown because if you look at a tree when you're painting a tree, trees are brown and they're green and they're yellow. And it doesn't matter what time of year. If you look at it at the um at the colors of a tree and how to paint a tree, they have all. So I just wanted to share that. They have undertones all over the place. So I can subtly add my green in here. And over here. So we look a little bit more like a leaf. Here we go. And they're not all one color. Now I want to go to a smaller brush back to my size four. Yeah, back into the green. And I want to add. Okay, it's got to be a little darker than that. And a little less wet. So I can get this detail in here. There we go. And then I'll be able to go right in like that. And add my little details. It being a leaf. Like that. And like this. Right like that. And the idea is, guys, pick up your paintbrushes and have some fun. And don't worry so much about what your end result looks like. Because it can be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. The stuff that I do, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not great. And it makes great die cuts. So I just wanted to share that. Don't end, we're doing an art journal, and I don't tend to take that too seriously. I'm not doing um, a painting that's going to hang into um, a museum someplace. So I'm not worried about it being completely perfect. So I just wanted to share that. So don't ever, you know, don't ever feel like um, you can't try something or, um, you know, and don't be hard on yourself um, when it comes to um, techniques and um, whether or not, you know, you're going to create this perfect thing. Because it honestly doesn't matter, guys. And that's just what I wanted to say. It just doesn't matter. If it turns out beautiful, great. And if it doesn't, at least we're enjoying the journey. So that's the whole thing. Pick up your art supplies and have fun with them. And that's the whole thing. And I always say too, don't ever compare your work to somebody else's work. Um, only ever compare it to the work that you've previously done. So that, you know, we're all on a different journey. We've all started at a different place. And not all of us are, you know, are Picassos, right? But so as long as we're having fun, that's, that's what counts, guys. We enjoy the journey and just don't be hard on yourselves. And see, not bad. I, I smudged the daylights out of that when we first started. So I was able to kind of, you know, fix it and still make it look like a leaf. I probably should have another little thing in here, but... That's okay. I'm happy with this. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's our art journal, right? 
and then I can start adding in my little details here and there now that things are starting to dry because again it looks very two-dimensional at first once it's dry because it's really hard to add those things and when it's wet it's actually impossible there we go mm -hmm. There, that looks more like a leaf. And I'm going to touch that into the water very slightly. So there we go. I can just kind of add. There we go. Very lightly. A little bit of dark. So you can see where the stem of my, of my leaf is. Um, this one I might want to add a little bit more white. Now that things are starting to dry. Here we go. And here I can add some more shading so I'm happy with that aside from my shading over here add some depth there we go and same with here then I'm just using my thin brush right now and I can sort of come through yeah right like this so as you guys can see once you start adding in your fine details that's when things start to look the way you want them and you get more of a composition whites your best friend I find so you can start out with things super dark and then you kind of lighten them as you go and then I like how dark that is towards the top there so I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller here. Right along there. Perfect. And same with over here. I can come in and I can lighten these all up now. And I'm really happy with that. And again, guys, we're just having fun. And these are some simple things that you can do in your junk journals along the pages you can create yourself some nice stationery you can do this to envelopes there's so many things that we can do with these simple little little drawings that we've turned into little paintings and it's a lot of fun i really enjoy doing this kind of stuff and it's been a long time for me i usually um i like to use a lot of stamps and i like to i like to mold products and i usually watercolor with my distress inks so it's been a very long time since I've actually picked up um, watercolor paints. I haven't done this in probably, I want to say, a good 10 years. Because I usually just use my distress inks. I know it's been a, probably about 15 years since I've done an actual canvas painting. but as long as you guys are having fun that's the main thing right that's what it is for me it's like this is our creative time and just enjoy the process and if it's a hot mess oh well it becomes beautiful die cuts And if you don't like it, just add some more paint. Like, see, I've made a little oops here, guys. See, and I'm touching my hand in wet. <laughs> don't do that. You'll smear it. So, again, just if you do a little oops or you smudge something, you can go in and you can just lift it off. It's harder for me because I'm using mixed media cardstock and not watercolor paint. But that's okay. Or when it dries out a little white. And then I can add my little foliage in here. So again, for this one here, it just has like little crosses kind of thing coming all different ways over here. Kind of like that. Same thing like this. So when I do grass, I just like to, it's like a little flick and flip like that of your brush. 
you guys can see that. And you're just adding like little, little bits in. And it can be big bits or it can be little bits, however you like to do it. And again, I can just kind of, without any real rhyme or reason. And I could turn that into a flower if I wanted to. Sorry guys, I'm not in focus. There we go. So it comes up like that right here. And then, like I showed um, in the last video, you can take a little bit of blue or, or um, another color and you just kind of watercolor in some flowers or some foliage and just kind of like that. There we go. And then I can do the same thing where I can add in a little green like this to make it look more like flowers. There we go. And this one has um, a fern kind of coming out like this. So again, guys, for something like a fern, I would draw like a line kind of like this that goes like that. And it comes down and then it goes teeny, teeny, tiny, kind of like this. In like a gathered section, kind of like that. And then it starts coming down like this. And I'm just doing like this little stippling with the tip of my brush. And I'm using my dark green to start. And again, I'm using my, um, my page that we printed as kind of like a frame of reference. And I'm doing mine a little bigger. It doesn't matter. So, as you guys can see, because like I mentioned, sometimes it's nice to have a frame of reference when you're, when you're painting. And I'll take like a series of photographs. And then I'll pick and choose what I want to paint out of my photographs and combine them to one painting. And that's something artists, that artists generally do. There we go. And then same kind of thing here. We can just kind of come up and show our foliage kind of up like that. There we go. So it looks kind of full across there. So that's how I would do some little ferns coming across here. Even. There we go. And then for a lighter color, and we're going to go back over to here. So we have our green. I'm going to show you guys that. Our green. Cadmium? I don't think that's a cadmium. Um, let me see. Where's my box? Cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and sap green. Yep, that's what that one is. Sap green. Nope, this one's... Yeah, sap green. Sorry, guys. Yeah, that's what this one is. And then I want to take it and I want to mix it with my cadmium yellow hue. And that's going to give me something a little lighter. So I'm going to take my green and yellow. And that's the one that I get. And then when I add white to that, it'll come lighter. And it'll come up lighter. Add a little bit of water. And same thing, we can add like our um, our highlights to that. So sometimes there's a little, little bit more, say yellow, coming in like that. There 
there we go. And we have our highs and we have our lows. And same thing, guys, we just kind of came in here and we can add a little bit more to make these look a little bit more full. And we still have our highs and our lows. There we go. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to check my time. All right, I've got 11.47. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. We'll come back next week and we can add some more details. And I want to add, um, like from this one, I'll add the botanicals to the top. All right, thanks, everyone. Um, you guys have a great night, and I will be back next Friday. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Bye.